a while since I did my last roundup of the best Wi-Fi 7 routers. And so I figured it was probably time to update that since a lot of other options have come out. So we're gonna talk about the best Wi-Fi 7 routers that you can now buy from the most affordable to the best splurge one that I like and why now might actually be a good time to upgrade. Firstly, if you're not familiar, Wi-Fi 7 has all of the features from Wi-Fi 6E and Wi-Fi 6 and is backwards compatible with all of the previous versions of Wi-Fi. But if the router and any device on the network also support Wi-Fi 7, then they can benefit from all the pretty impressive features features that Wi-Fi 7 brings, like double the streams so more devices can communicate at once, more data can be sent per packet which increases speeds, the ultra fast 6 gigahertz band that we got from Wi-Fi 6E is here and can now support channels twice as large so it'll be even faster, and MLO or multi-link operation allows the router and devices to combine all of the frequencies 2.4 five and six gigahertz together into a single connection and even dynamically move the device to whatever connection is best, along with send data down multiple connections, essentially creating a much larger pipeline to send and receive with. Honestly, it's all pretty clever. And I did a full decoder video, my explainer series here in the channel, detailing all of the features and differences of Wi-Fi 7 that I'll link below if you're curious. But once you've decided that Wi-Fi 7 is for you, the next obvious question is, what are the best Wi-Fi 7 routers that I should buy? Well, I bought and tested a bunch and here are the four best Wi-Fi 7 routers for various scenarios. Okay, first up, the best value Wi-Fi 7 router. This is the TP-Link Deco BE68. And full disclosure, TP-Link is the only company that sent me their routers for this video, whereas everybody else, I bought their routers. Now the TP-Link Deco BE68 is a tri-band mesh Wi-Fi system that uses the 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, and 6 gigahertz bands. That last band, 6 gigahertz, is the newest Wi-Fi band, which was introduced in Wi-Fi 6E. Now to explain that a bit further, the basic idea is that while 6 gigahertz has a much shorter range than the other bands, it also has much faster speeds. So if you're closer to any of the routers in the mesh system, you'll get the fastest speeds available. And theoretically, this system has a max speed of 14 gigabits per second. Now, in the real world, you won't hit that, but it's how manufacturers all display speed now in a semi-standardized way, at least. So it's a good way to look at the overall throughput of a system compared to another one, usually. Now with that though, 14 gigabits per second is definitely one of the fastest on the market that I've seen. The BE68 is also a mesh system as mentioned, which means that you can choose how many Wi-Fi nodes you want based on the size of your home and the coverage that you need to get fast Wi-Fi around your home. And long story short, it'll automatically create one large Wi-Fi network that the router seamlessly switches which node your device is connected to. Again, you can check out the full decoder episode I have on mesh Wi-Fi below. But this one can reach up to 8,100 square feet of coverage and support up to 200 devices on the network. And it uses what TP-Link calls AI-driven seamless roaming to help your device transition seamlessly as you move around the coverage area. Now, besides wireless access, the Deco BE68 has three ethernet ports on the back of each node. There's one with a one gigabit per second speed, one with 2.5 gigabits per second, and one kind of nuts 10 gigabit per second. Since each node has these ports, you can put devices that can take advantage of these speeds through your local network like a NAS, a network attached storage next to any of them instead of being forced to try and connect them all to the main node. Also, those ports can be used to connect each node through a wired backhaul for faster speeds and lower latency if you wanted to run the cable between them. And something unique here about the TP router is that you can actually have them all simultaneously use the wired and wireless backhauls together as one MLO pipeline and it increases bandwidth between each node. Now beyond that, I also quite like the look of the routers. They have a minimal look, so they're not over the top and they should blend into any environment that they're in. You can also easily manage the routers from the Deco app. And you can use the TP-Link Home Shield feature for better network protection and IoT protection to block websites, add parental controls, etc. The TP-Link Deco BE68 comes in two or three packs. And as per the usual, I will leave the best price that I can find on both of those systems in the description below. But if you don't need all the bells and whistles and want to save even more money, you can also check out the Deco BE5000, which also supports Wi-Fi 7, but its theoretical speeds hit five gigabits per second using dual five gigahertz bands instead of 14 gigabits per second. And while it doesn't have that six gigahertz band, if you don't have a lot of devices that use six gigahertz, then you won't notice too much anyway. And it's still a mesh system. So you can get multiple nodes for better coverage and it still has all the same AI driven seamless roaming, home shield, and even that clever simultaneous wired slash wireless backhaul as well using one of the two 2.5 gigabit per second ethernet ports found on each note. And again, link below. If you're a gamer and you don't need a mesh network, then the Asus ROG Rapture GT 
BE9EA Pro is sort of the quintessential Wi-Fi 7 gaming route. And as such, it looks like something straight out of a sci-fi movie, obviously. Now this router has the 2.4, 5, and 6 gigahertz bands that the Deco has, but it also adds a second 6 gigahertz band so that it can support faster speeds and more devices on those faster bands. That's especially helpful if you have a ton of devices or if you want to set up a mesh system and still keep one band totally free for your gaming or streaming devices specifically. Like all of the routers on this list, it supports multi-link operation and those larger 320 megahertz channels, which basically means that there's a lot more bandwidth for your data, and it can use all of that from each frequency together to further increase speeds and capacity, especially when we add that second six gigahertz band as mentioned. It also steps up the number of wired connections as well. You'll get two 10 gigabit ports and four 2.5 gigabit ones, which means that there are plenty for all of those wired devices that you want to connect. So whether you're plugging in a gaming console or a PC, network attached storage, or just want to keep latency as low as possible, it'll definitely handle it. Now the router also includes Asus's own network tools, things like game prioritization, built-in security features, and detailed controls for how your Wi-Fi is used. It might be overkill for the average person, but if you're gaming competitively or just want top-tier performance with no compromises for your games, this is probably as good as it gets. And again, link below if you want to learn more. Okay. And if you just want the best of the best and you don't mind paying for it, the Eromax 7 is probably my pick for the best splurge Wi-Fi 7 router. It looks good, it's powerful, and it's incredibly easy to set up and manage. Like the others on this list, it supports Wi-Fi 7, including all of the major upgrades like the multi-link operation, the 320 megahertz channels, so you're covered speed-wise again. Now the theoretical max wireless speed of the Eromax 7 is 4.3 gigabits per second, and we have a theoretical max wired speed of up to 9.4 gigabits per second. But what makes the Eero Max 7 stand out is its addition of so many different features, but with a focus on simplicity. You'll still get the tri-band Wi-Fi with 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, and 6 gigahertz bands, so getting one of each band covers your bases. It's also a mesh system, so if you have a larger home, you can add more units to cover the entire space in Wi-Fi, and of course, it handles all of that switching and background stuff for you. There are two 10 gigabit Ethernet ports on the back, which again is great for those who want to plug in a NAS, game console, etc., and it also has two 2.5 gigahertz ports, and a USB-C port. And of course, it works great with the Euro app, which is clean and super easy to use. You can see which devices are connected, set up guest networks, and you can access some other features with an Eero Plus subscription if you want, extra parental controls and extra security tools, etc. It also works as a smart home hub and can act as a connection point for Matter, Thread, and Zigbee devices. It's definitely pricey, there's no getting around that, but if you want all the bells and whistles with a focus on simplicity, the Eero Max 7 is probably one you should put on your list. And lastly, if you're looking for a high-end Wi-Fi 7 router that also can help you ditch the rental fees for the modem from your internet service provider, then you probably need to check out the Aeris Surfboard G54. If you have a one gigabit per second or higher cable internet connection and wanna have a one box solution to replace not just the router, the thing that provides a Wi-Fi network for the location, but also the modem, the thing that connects the network in the space to the internet at large. Now, these units are usually not separate. They're usually a combo unit like this one. It has the same Wi-Fi 7 inherit benefits that we've already discussed, but is not a mesh system. So it's only good for places that just need one access point, but that one here can cover up to 5,000 square feet, apparently. It also has an up to 18 gigabit per second theoretical wireless speeds. It has four one gigabit per second ethernet ports and one 10 gigabit per second ethernet port. Now, the big reason that you would get this though is the simplicity of having the one unit and not having to worry about a router plus modem and still get all the benefits of Wi-Fi 7. Beyond that though, it can technically save you a little money each year because most cable companies will actually charge you a rental fee on your bill for the cable modem that you're using, which isn't a lot, but over time, it can add up. And now, honestly, this is the same router modem combo that I mentioned in my last Wi-Fi 7 video, but that's because it's kind of the only one out there that can do this. So simply check with your cable service provider first. This only works with a cable company, so not fiber optic, keep that in mind. But once confirmed, you can buy this, use all the benefits of Wi-Fi 7, and save that rental monthly. And there you go. The best Wi-Fi 7 routers now updated for the fact that we have a lot less expensive Wi-Fi 7 routers available. And again, as I've been mentioning, I will leave links down below in the description should you be interested in any of them. Uh, now though, I'm going to go pick up all of the routers and cables and everything that I just made a huge mess of in here. <laughs> Good night.